Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, bringing another math video. This one on uh, reference angles. So, um, one of the most important things to sort of get your head wrapped around when you're starting to solve trigonometric equations and you're starting, um, you know, some introductory trig is trying to figure out what the reference angle is. So the reference angle, by definition, and I'm just gonna, just gonna, it's not a very good. Uh, let me see if I can't get this right in the middle here. So, here's a little axis. So, I'm just going to draw an angle. So, I'll do it in red so it stands out a little bit better. So, here's an angle. Let's call it, you know, it looks, let's call it 150 degrees. So, the reference angle is the angle that's made between the terminal arm so this guy right here is called the terminal arm terminal arm and the x-axis so the terminal arm and the x-axis well the x-axis is right here this is the y-axis so the x-axis is right here so that guy is the reference angle and I usually call it theta r so basically how you find it is just figure out how far, if I know the entire way is at 180 and well my angle that I have is 150, how much is left over? So really it's just 180 subtract 150, so that's 30 degrees. So that is my reference angle. So some important things that you need to know about a reference angle is that it's always between 0 and 90 degrees or if you're in radians zero radians and pi over two it's always positive it's always between zero and ninety so if you get a reference angle and it's not um, between there then you really need to think about um, you know is it between the x-axis and the terminal arm so let me just draw another uh, another guy and give you another example so let me draw a little axis here the best way to represent an angle is just putting it on on a plane. So sometimes you'll see people do this: zero, ninety, one eighty, two seventy. And I'm going to draw one in the third quadrant. So the quadrant numbers are, of course, this is one, two, three, and four. So here's my initial arm. Here's my terminal arm. So I'm going to call this guy. 260 degrees. So if you look at um, what my um, theta r is or my reference angle, so remember it's always between the x axis, so this is the x axis here, and the terminal arm, so it's this angle here. So a lot of people will make the mistake in doing it between the y axis, so this little guy right here. But you don't want to do that. You want to make sure you remember it's between the x-axis and the terminal arm. So if you look here, I'm at 180 already, and my angle's all the way to 260. So really all I have to do is go 260, subtract 180, which we know is going to be 80 degrees. So that fits my criteria. It's positive, but it's between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. So it's really important that you keep that in mind. Now, the reason why I really like the idea of the reference angle is because it allows us to get rid of the the unit circle in my opinion. I mean you could use it with injunction with the unit circle but knowing how to calculate a reference angle is so important. So if I have a situation like this and some of you guys will probably see this in the future where sine theta say is equal to negative 1 over 2 I can find if I can find the reference angle, so I know I have a solution here, theta. And if you know the unit circle off by heart, you might be able to just figure it out. But I don't want to spend time memorizing the unit circle. I want to be able to solve any situation. And the unit circle is only going to work for specific values of sine cos tan. So uh, it's very limited in that. So if I know how to work with the reference angle and how to find it, then I can use it for other things. So the way we do that is theta r equal to sine negative 1 of whatever you have here except you take the positive of it. The reason why it's positive here always plus 
is because your reference angle is between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. If you put a negative in here, you're not guaranteed to get an angle between 0 and 90, and that's what you want. Uh, angle between 0 and 90. So if I can do this, I don't need to even remember my... Um, what you know sine of one half is equal to can I, I can just throw it right in my calculator and it's going to spit it back at me so I, I know that sine of one half is 30 degrees so that is my reference angle and then I can use the cast rule so the cast rule is probably familiar to some of you guys so the cast rule here C A S T and then I can figure out well, where is sine negative 2 because then, well, that's originally what is hat that I have. Sine is negative 1 half. Well, sine is negative. And I did the casserole wrong, of course. C A S T. Sine is negative in the third and fourth quadrants. So in the third quadrant, we can find our theta by going 180 plus theta r. And that's going to be. 210, so 180 plus 30, and theta is equal to, in the third quadrant, 360 minus theta r, so that will be 330. So I just solved those without having to worry about the unit circle, and I figured out that in those two quadrants, that's what si that's where sine equals negative one half. So that really makes life a lot easier when we have a good understanding of the reference angle. But the most important thing to remember, if you're computing it like this, inside the brackets, has to be positive, you need an answer between 0 and 190. So just before I go, I'll just redraw the cast rule for you, just so you have um, you know, a really good, solid foundation of what the cast rule is, because I love the cast rule, C-A-S-T. So this is the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant, and in the first quadrant, theta is equal to theta r, so the reference angle is just theta. In the second quadrant, theta is equal to 180 minus theta r. In the fourth, third quadrant, theta is equal to 180 plus theta r. And in the fourth quadrant, theta is equal to 360 minus theta r. So knowing this in conjunction with how to find the reference angle, really, really important. So, um, oops. Let me go back there. Let me just flick back one second. So here's my original reference angle. See, so all you need to remember, your reference angle is the angle between the terminal arm and the x-axis. It's always between 0 and 90 degrees. So guys, I hope this video helps you with your study of trigonometry. Best of luck, and I'll see you guys in class.